I always imagine this vessel ending up in a museum, you know, like, oh, it's changed the world. It changed the course of history because of the movement that it helped create. What's significant here is that our waste is being made into the fabric of life. The fabric of our lives is now becoming part of the fabric of life itself. This will have unforeseen consequences. We've all heard about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Great Pacific Garbage Great Patch. Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Massive garbage patch in the North Pacific. The largest accumulation zone of ocean plastic on the planet. Charles Moore, the trained chemist, has become one of the world's leading authorities on one of the planet's biggest threats, garbage in our seas. What was really bothering me was that my beach where I surf was closed on a periodic basis because of bacteriological contamination. That really bothered me. That's one of the impetuses for starting Algolita was to deal with bacteriological contamination. And that's when I realized that the kind of testing we could do was only at the shore. And uh, that's what got me interested in building a vessel that could navigate offshore and do the kind of research that would determine how contaminated our ocean was. We knew that plastic was a problem. We knew that trash was a problem. That wasn't the focus of our work. Uh, now, we became dismasted uh, leaving American Samoa. Squalls around the equator busted off our mast and we couldn't get it replaced in Samoa. So we decided, well, we had extra fuel, we uh, uh, had twin diesel engines. We'll just put real slow through this doldrum and because it was so wide and so flat, any trash that was there would be floating up to the surface. If it's 1,000 miles in diameter, this huge giant circle out there in this high pressure zone, and that all has these little bits of plastic floating up, we need to measure that. When I finally got back, I talked to scientists about how to measure that plastic that was out there. We developed the manitrol for that. So when we went back with this tool and started dragging it, and we saw all these shards of plastic in the net, then that was the aha moment. I said, my goodness, this place is crawling with plastic. Enormous amounts of debris passing the boat all the time. I've never seen anything like it. It's terrible and terrifying and revealing all at the same time. The discovery of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, the idea that somehow there was a captain out there that saw a giant pile of trash, uh, that's phony baloney. Uh, the real truth is that it was just a guy that had a suspicion something was out of whack. In that sense, I was part of that discovery. Creating a, an international community of people that were working in the microplastic space, whether they were artists or anthropologists, marine biologists, whatever they were doing, you just really felt like you were kind of all brought together. Really, the, the purpose of building the Algita was to create a platform where people working their way up through the sciences could have a way to test their hypotheses. We wanted to be able to have people get out there, do their research, when it was appropriate, when it was needed to be done. It's gonna be really interesting to start to analyze this. We're expecting that there will be a lot smaller pieces of plastic, and maybe we'll find that a large portion of the plastic in the ocean is actually below the surface. Oh, there's no question that many people on this vessel went on to do things that uh, had a uh, major impact on their region and on their society. For instance, Scuba Drew Wheeler went on to do a lot of work in the scuba industry. Anna Cummins and, and Marcus Erickson were engaged to be married on the boat. 
and went on to found Five Gyres, which has been a major player. Some of the most cited papers having to do with plastic pollution had their origin here on the oceanographic research vessel Algita. I've had two really good first mates. One, a woman who's stronger than any man and had more savvy and was able to handle more situations. That's Raquel Devine. And then the others that I've been working with over 30 years, almost 40, Facundo Resendez. So between Raquel and Facundo, when I have them both on board, I can relax. He'd have little dance parties really randomly and he'd just like, he had like this playlist on his iPod that was like, I don't know, like generation one. And he would like put this playlist on and he would just like crank up the music. Constantly putting the music on. I remember students always dancing on the bow of the boat. Like I like to tell people, uh, I'm a jack of all trades, but a master of fun. <laughs> What else is today, Buck? Today is my birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 26 today. Life's good. We got cake and everything. Yeah, so the rest of the afternoon is going to be filled with uh, bringing in the spinnakers when that wind drops uh, and then eating, filling our bellies. We often hear that people think about what to have for dinner, what to eat, maybe 30% of the time, but out at sea, Really, you think about it about 70% of the time. You really want a nice meal because you're under stress, you're working all the time. So cooking became a very big part of my job. I just used the fact that I had an organic farm, that I was capable of making these good meals, and got everybody involved in creating really good food on board. It's like reframed the way that I eat <laughs> now. <laughs> so I guess it starts like with the provisioning and Charlie would try and provision her from his garden and then from the farmers markets and so even when we were like in remote islands we would go to the market and we picked things so that they would ripen on board. I think when you're that removed from all of your creature comforts to have really good whole hearty food is really really important and as different crew members would come aboard, they would bring different cuisine with them. Mince and potatoes by Anne Winton Bynes. Better in the bowl. Eventually, everybody would contribute and they would make a meal because they just recognised that this was the heart of the, the vessel, you know. If I could thank Oavi Algita for anything, it would probably be for changing my life. <laughs> it taught me so much about myself, about the world, and yeah, it really, it really set my course. I feel very, very privileged to have had such a formative experience so early in my life, and it will always stay with me. I am who I am because of it. If you could thank the Alvita for something. I thank her for the trip. Hey. <laughs> thank you for the trip. Can you tell me some of the things that gave ORV Alvita her character? Oh yeah, so, so, so many things. I loved her smell. I loved the intricate woodwork that Charlie had lovingly installed. I did the inlay on that dinette. It's our original logo because we were Alguita. Alga means kelp in Spanish. Alguita means little kelp plant. And that's still there. I think that you can't really just go past those sort of personal touches, you know, the, the mats, like the carpets and um, all the funny little things and the stickers that had been collected from around the places that told stories and even like, even the spice rack. <laughs> I loved her chaos and her mess of like all of the things because there was so much stuff but all of that stuff when you're at sea with Charlie had a purpose and it was his redundancy. Sometimes I'm like why do you have this crap? 
know, but it's it always had a purpose. Charlie and Oavi Algita, they they were one and the same. Eh? They gave each other the character. If you had to choose one word to describe Algita, what would that one word be? Solid. Although I have certainly had mistakes and failings and made errors in judgment, she has survived them all. The perfect analogy, I think, for ORB El Gita is the book, The Giving Tree. I think about all of the people it's given to in so many different ways, and even as it leaves our organization, that it still continues to give. The capital will be used to make a sustainable endowment for the future. That will be the legacy of Algita having uh, moved on. The sale of the Algita is going to help fund an endowment for a brand new research and learning center that we're building here in Long Beach. It's a really beautiful ending to a long, important story. Pasteur said uh, that the infinitely small is infinitely important. And as I get older, I'm more interested, rather than exploring the infinity of the ocean in its breadth, looking at the infinitely small, how this plastic is breaking down into these nanoparticles. So it's important to me to have a institution, the Moore Institute for Plastic Pollution Research, it's another world. It's, it's, there's a great deal of adventure to be had in looking at samples in the microscope. So I've kind of resigned my membership in the Explorers Club, but I'm in the new Explorers Club of Nano and Microplastic Research. Charlie being the captain, you always felt safe. You always felt like you could have such a fun time, but still get the work done. To get to learn and, and work alongside Charlie uh, with all of his knowledge and experience and passion was unmeasurable, really. A captain is a, definitely a special type of leader because you're not only leading a team of people, but you're also like wholeheartedly responsible for their well-being and you have to create that that community and a level of trust. Charlie just has an incredible way of um, kind of just sailing through it. You know, like you almost don't even know. He could see the big picture of the problem and he didn't just quantify it, but he also communicated it. He enabled an emotional connection for people and something that we could all understand. And that's why I say, you know, it was the drop that made the biggest ripples. Charlie is incredibly humble when he talks about his impact on this planet, but I really do believe that he is one of the greatest thought leaders of our time. And this vessel really helped him do the work that changed the world. stop polluting and give the ocean time to spit it out. And she can eventually get rid of this junk if we give her a chance.